everyone and welcome back to another vlog. Today's video is going to be my vlog for the Bacopathon. It's actually Friday right now and the Bacopathon does not start until 12am GMT tomorrow. But I did think that I would just start this vlog because you know, when the actual Bacopathon starts, it's going to be very dark and I just wanted to make use of the light, the natural light. <laughs> I am currently in the middle of two books and then I've got one book that I do know I'm going to read because we already know the first prompts. So the books that I'm reading at the moment are Cress, which I am like just over halfway through. And then I'm also reading uh, What If It's Us? by Becky Albertalli and what's his name? What is his name? Adam Silvera, that's his name. I'm currently through, uh, sort of halfway through both of them. And if I can get them into the, like if I can get them to fit the prompts, then I will. However, obviously we don't know with Bacopathon because you don't know the prompts to begin with. We only know the first two prompts. The two prompts that we got were to read a book with the dark cover or to read a fantasy i think it was so i am going with the prompt to read a book with the dark cover because i need to reread the hunger games because i've got a live show on the 27th at 12 a.m no not a.m don't worry it's not at 12 a.m <laughs> a live show at 12 p.m gmt on the 27th of March. I thought it was a good book to read for a readathon because it's obviously a YA and it's like quite easy to read. As I said I'm gonna try and fit Cress and What If It's Us into it if I can otherwise we'll just see what happens. So after 12 hours, so it starts at 12 a.m GMT, after 12 hours when it's 12 p.m GMT there's going to be a dice roll. We're gonna get two more prompts. 12 hours later we're going to get another dice roll and two more prompts and then 12 hours, bleh, 12 hours later we will get our final two prompts and then 12 hours later the copathon will be over <laughs> which I'm sure I will then be like passed out asleep because I like I need sleep. My plan for the rest of today in order to prepare is just to get as much uni work done as possible so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, because I do have some stuff I need to get done so I'm gonna try and get as much done today as possible and then I'm just gonna go to sleep relatively early I have to be up at about 1am for the first live show when it's starting um, because it's actually I'm an hour ahead of the UK so I have to be up at 1am and I'm thinking I want to get a good like solid chunk of sleep before I'm going to try and update this vlog like every, at least every four hours. I'm thinking every time there's like a live show change, then I'm going to try and update the vlog. But I will see you tomorrow morning and see how this goes. Good morning. It is, I don't know what time it is. It's just gone one basically for me, which means that it's just gone 12, aka midnight in the UK, which means that the Bacopathon has just started and <laughs> I'm going to be very quiet up until the point where people would normally wake up on the weekends because I do live in a very small uh, flat so therefore like I can imagine that people can hear noises very easily which obviously I don't want to wake anyone else up but I have just tuned into the live it's just started the first one of many lives and I'm really excited. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really tired, I didn't sleep very well. <laughs> kind of questioning like what I'm doing right now but I think now I feel relatively awake, I'm gonna make myself coffee, that's definitely gonna help. I feel like I'm gonna be consuming a lot of caffeine in the next 48 hours and obviously I'm gonna start with The Hunger Games like I said. I also remembered that I've still got like the majority of the Narnia books to read so depending on how far I get with the Hunger Games I might also read the next Narnia book that I have not read yet for the fantasy prompt because that way I take off two prompts so I will catch up with you guys later. <laughs> oh 
oh my god um there will be eight prompts in total a thousand people that is hours. pretty from awesome from now until the last one just wanted to point out Sunday, goodbye UK, obviously like i don't know hello 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 it has just gone <laughs> it's what is the time i don't know what the time is my mind is crazy i think it's coming up to like half past three which means we are within the third hour of the 48 hour readathon and i am on part two of the hunger games i've just like gotten to the bit where it starts on part two i'm really enjoying it i'm enjoying it just as much as i did the first time i think i just i can't really remember how i felt but this is a really good book <laughs> i'm not gonna lie every time i think about ya books i'm like oh do i really like them are they too young for me and then i read a ya book and i'm like yes i definitely like ya it's just so easy to read really like the characters obviously this is just such a like a, a well-known story but I just wanted to update you and I'm really enjoying it. Page 159 is where I am at at the moment. I'm feeling like I'm reading quite fast. I'm feeling quite productive, but that could also be because I'm really tired. <laughs> so just in general, everything blurs together when I'm tired. But let's see how long I last. <laughs> I am never awake at this time of the day. So it's a weird situation. We're on to round two of the live shows and it's just gone five o'clock for me i am still reading the hunger games i'm like on page 245 so i will hopefully get this finished within this live show and then potentially start something else <laughs> It's quarter past nine, which means that the third live stream has just started with Steph, um, Steph Love's channel. <sighs> yeah, so the third live show has just started. I am watching it. However, I have finished The Hunger Games. I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars, which for some reason I thought I'd given it four stars the first time I read it, but I didn't. I gave it five stars, so I enjoyed it just as much as I did the first time. I don't really have much to say about this, especially because, as I said before, I'm doing a live show with some of my friends where we're going to be talking about this book, so I'm not going to say too much about it. But yeah, I finished that. On this live stream, Steph is doing like a scavenger hunt sort of thing where she gives us prompts and we have to go and find a book that fits it. And I thought I'd just mention it. I wasn't going to say anything, <laughs> but one of the prompts was to find a book with an author that has the same initials as you. And I honestly did not think that I would be able to find anything. And then I just remembered that I've literally got this where the author has all three initials that are exactly the same as mine. My initials are CCH. Claire C. Holland has those same initials, so that was pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm thinking I might have a quick nap because I'm really tired. And I also want to go in the shower to try and wake myself up. Um, and then otherwise I might start another book, but I might just wait until the next roll, which is like in four hours. We'll see what happens. Been in the shower, I'm feeling all nice and fresh and I decided I'm not gonna go to sleep because I'm actually feeling quite average. I'm not feeling like super duper tired. So I'm thinking that I can, you know, push for another few hours before having to take any kind of rest. And I think I'm gonna start the line the witch in the wardrobe. I 
I'm pretty sure that I've already read this. I think it says that I have read it on my Goodreads, but I just cannot really remember it. Obviously, I know the story. It's the only one of the Narnia uh, stories that I actually properly know. However, I just really wanted to reread this. Seeing as I can't really remember reading it, it's also only like just under 200 pages, I think. So I should be able to get this done really quickly. I'll have them with the book up with on one first, but it doesn't matter. Okay, that's the one I clicked on, so. Yay! So, hopefully you guys okay. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it okay, but I will repeat them afterwards. So, roll drop, two, board one. Roll number two. I've definitely got a book that I think that I can fit into that prompt. I'm not sure if I wanted to read the book, but we'll see what the next roll is. The first option for the next prompt was to read a book with representation of a person of colour. So whether that's like with characters or the author being a POC. And then the second one was to read a contemporary book. So I do definitely have some books that I can like including this right off the bat i'm thinking girl and other by bernardine evaristo i think this is particularly good because it's it's obviously it's like short stories kind of so i think it'll be easier to read it is quite a big book so i'm not quite sure otherwise i am currently in the middle of reading what if it's us which is a contemporary like romance kind of thing i don't know i'm, I'm gonna get back to you later I think I've decided what, no, I definitely have decided what I'm doing because I started reading a book so therefore I have decided and I'm not going to back out of it. <laughs> I was talking about potentially reading Girl with Another by Bernadine Evaristo and I've decided against that just because it's like 400 pages or something and I wanted to see if I could find something that was a bit shorter. I had a look at the Libby app which is the app that like I can use through my library and I managed to find a book called Red at the Bone I think it's called by Jacqueline Woodson and I've literally never heard of this before like I haven't heard of the author I haven't heard of this book I, I mean maybe I have sort of in passing or something but I don't really remember much of it I started reading it, uh, I think I managed to read about 45 pages in half an hour, so that's quite good. The only thing is, I don't really enjoy reading ebooks, but I sort of have to because I don't have that many books at the moment. I'm not quite sure exactly what this book is about. I know that it involves uh, like a sort of dual timeline sort of thing where essentially we're in 2001 and uh, there's this main character Melody who is I'm not sure if she's African American or if she's mixed race but she is you know she has she definitely has like an African American father I think and I'm not quite sure about her mother and her mum had her when she was really young she was like 18 or something like that so there's definitely going to be themes of like race and uh, teenage pregnancy and things like that and I also Oh my god, what was it? I was picking up on something else, but I can't even remember what it is now. I think maybe the idea of like, um, of like uh, paradigms and like, you know, families, family traditions and things like that in, not traditions, but like in regards to children following the footsteps of their parents. So if your mum had you when you were relative, uh, not you, <laughs> if your mum had you when she was relatively young, that then you would then automatically have kids when you're relatively young, which obviously isn't always the case, but that's obviously going to fulfil the prompt for 
uh, reading a book that has a POC character, main character. Um, and then I still need to finish The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe from the last roll. I think I've got like 50 something pages left of this. I've got about 100 pages left of Red at the Bone. So I should get that done relatively quickly. And then I am thinking of picking up a graphic novel for the other prompt, which was to read a contemporary because I heard Maddie talking about a graphic novel that she read that was something to do with cheerleading. So I think it's like a contemporary graphic novel. So I'll probably read that because that was free on NetGalley and it was like one of the ones that you can just download straight away. So I'll probably read that. And I'm still not sure when I'm going to go to bed because I definitely need to sleep at some point. I'm still trying to figure out how to like make this all work. <laughs> Quite frankly, I don't know when I'm going to sleep or when I'm waking up. And I definitely want to be awake for all of the, um, all of the dice rolls. Uh, what was I going to say? <sighs> yeah, I want to be awake for all of the dice rolls. So that means that I need to make sure that I'm awake at 1am tomorrow morning yes <laughs> and then 1pm again and then find out how long I'm staying awake for after that so there's lots of things to think about but I don't think I'm going to update you too much until I'm like at the end of the books that I'm currently reading and then if I do start anything else I will also tell you about that Hello everyone, I've got some updates for you. I have, since I last updated you, I finished The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. And then I read the graphic novel that I think I spoke about, which I said could fulfill the prompt of reading a contemporary book. And that was a lot of fun. It was called Cheer Up and it was essentially just a sapphic story about two girls who were on the same uh, cheerleading squad and one of them is transgender and it's just sort of like their relationship. Uh, it was a graphic novel, it was about 120-ish pages so it was like really quick. I read it in like half an hour or something like that and that was good because I could just then tick off one of the prompts. I think I'm going to wait until tomorrow to update you again because I honestly don't know how much I'm going to read after now I sort of want to go to bed soon because I have been up since one and it's like six o'clock now so <laughs> I'm kind of tired and I also want to get up so that I'm up at one o'clock to hear the prompts the new ones so <laughs> yeah I'll speak to you later good morning everyone I am not going to show you my face because I've just woken up I put my alarm on for half an hour before this live show started and for some reason slept through it woke up and i mean to be fair it's not that late but i literally managed to get onto the live just in time for the roll drops so the first prompt that we got this time was to read a book well the first book in a series which i think i've got a book in mind for that and then the second one was to read, like, a random book on your TBR, essentially. And obviously I'll need to figure that out. I want to finish off the book that I have left over from my last, from the last roll drop. And then I will speak to you later. I just finished... What was it called? I just finished Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I enjoyed it and I can definitely tell that it's a good book. I think that if I wasn't kind of like half asleep while I was reading it, then I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. However, there's just something about books like these. I feel like it I'm not quite sure what it's classified as, if it's like contemporary or literary fiction. For me it read very sort of literary fiction, which it had like, it kept on flipping between 
different times and characters and perspectives and stuff which you know sometimes it's fine I feel like it's very hit or miss for me so sometimes it's completely fine and I can get along with it this time it just didn't seem to gel and I was confused to be fair I think the fact that I'm like half asleep or I was half asleep while I was reading it kind of you know <laughs> affected my reading experience a lot however I, I, I do think it was a good book I just it didn't there was something missing for me I just did not feel that big connection and also it felt kind of disjointed because of the fact that it was changing perspectives so often I think I'll have to wait until I think I'm gonna have to brew on this for a couple of days before I can actually properly articulate what I think so I think yeah I'm gonna leave it up for now I I gave it three stars because as I said it's a good book I enjoyed it I think also the fact that I read it as an ebook was not great I just in general do not look in general I don't like reading ebooks or audiobooks but sometimes I just have to do that because I don't have that big of a physical TBR. So anyway, now we're moving on to the uh, next lot of prompts. I've completed four prompts. I've read four books, which I'm very happy about. Now I'm moving on to the third round of prompts, which, as I said before, the first one was to read the first book in a series and the other one was to essentially compile a list of books from your TBR that's like a mixture of books you really want to read and that you're like not as excited to read and then using a num a random number generator to get a number and then just read that one that correlates to the number if that makes sense. <laughs> For the first, I'm going to focus mainly on the first prompt. See the problem is now that I've got, what is the time now? I've got like seven, no, I haven't, I think I've got like seven and a half, like a six, but somewhere between like, oh my God, I do not know what I'm saying. I think I've got like six hours, six or something hours before I'm supposed to be meeting online to study. So I haven't actually got that long. However, I'm thinking that Hopefully, depending on what the, the next lot of prompts are, I can just roll anything that, like, I haven't... Roll? I don't know what I'm talking about. Anything that I haven't read from these prompts, I can sort of bring over into the next, like, or, like, the last 12 hours, and I'm just going to try and power through it and read as much as possible. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. For the prompt to read the first book in the series, I've decided to go with Mortal Engines, by Philip Reeve. The thing is, this has been on my, this is probably one of the books that's been on my TBR for the longest. This is like literally the only book in a series that I've got on my TBR that is the first book, except from the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. That's 400 pages. I'm not starting that. I am not starting that now, especially for the fact that it is high fantasy I think and also I've heard a lot of people say that it's quite confusing so <laughs> there's no way I'm starting that while I'm this tired however Mortal Engines I know there's a film I think that this is like somewhere between middle grade and YA surely it's not middle grade I think it's YA I'm not quite sure though this is like like set in like a steampunky London where well not just London but like essentially in this world cities move I think so I really don't know much about this but yeah I'm gonna read this because it's kind of the only thing that I've got and then I did look I made this pile of books which have um to be fair I could have I could have done better at mixing it but essentially these three books at the bottom kind of the books that I wanted to read the most because I really want to read Hashtag No Escape and My Best Friend's Exorcism. Hopefully I'll be able to get them in for the next prompt. Um, I'm also currently like 
I have like 100 pages left of Scarlet, no not Scarlet, of Cress, which would have been perfect to finish, but um, then I've got Go On With Other, which is, where, which is a book I considered reading earlier, I went, like I decided not to because it's like 400 pages, I've got Anne of Green Gables, I've got like a companion book thingy to uh, the series of Unfortunate Events series, which you know is short and then also I got the the third book in the Narnia Chronicle <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying the third book in the Chronicles of Narnia um I did do a random number generator and I'm not gonna lie when I got the number I was considering doing it again and then just pretending that that was the first time that I did it but I got the number four which I was like like I can't cheat I shouldn't cheat but also number four is probably one of my favorite numbers just because i'm born on the 4th of june so you know so i decided to stick with it and as you can probably tell based off of this pile of books um this is number four so <laughs> i'm gonna be reading gold another hopefully i just don't know how much of it i'm gonna get through but i'm just gonna try my very best so yes that is going to be the other book that I'm going to start. So I'm going to be switching between these books, I think primarily with focus on Mortal Engines, but I'm just going to try and get through as much as possible. I'm not going to like stress myself out about actually finishing them, but obviously if I can finish them, that'd be great. I'm currently... I've currently got Gavin's live on my computer i'm really sad because i wanted to wake up so that i could catch like the tail end of the last live show because then i would have sort of have tuned into every single live show thus far but i didn't i was like i, I was still asleep this sprint rate it finishes at quarter past which i think is based off of my previous knowledge of what the time was it's probably like in 15 minutes so i'm gonna try and start on one of these books and see how I feel. I think so far my page count is about, I want to say about 800 pages or something like that, which I'm pretty proud of. It is currently half past 11, which means that there's about an hour and a half until the next roll drop. I have literally not finished a book for a while I sort of missed out on the last reading sprint because I had to do something else and it's just completely taken me out of it and I don't know why I just don't feel like I'm doing a readathon anymore so I need to get back into the swing of things. I have I think just under 100 pages left of the Mortal Engines um, and then like I've barely read anything of Girl Woman Other but it's not really my priority I've read like one section out of I think there's 12 so I'm thinking my game plan is to finish Mortal Engines within the next hour and a half before the roll drop and then see what happens I might potentially be able to transfer Girl Woman Other to another prompt if that's if there's a prompt that comes up that fits it yeah roll drop number four the final roll for the 2021 board As you would have seen, we just got the final two prompts for this readathon. Before I talk about what I've planned to read for those prompts, I'm just going to say that I finished um, Mortal Engines. I'm going to give this three stars, I think, because while I did enjoy it, it wasn't like boring and it wasn't lagging at times. The story wasn't like super intriguing to me. I did not feel like a particular connection for the character towards the characters. I didn't feel like I was rooting for them in any way 
and I was slightly confused at times. I think that could be to do with the fact that I literally started reading this. When was it? <laughs> like two o'clock in the morning. So like that could definitely be one of the reasons why I just like sort of zoned out on certain things. This is part of a quartet. I have no like, like I don't, I don't feel like I need to carry on with the series. I still give it three stars because it is definitely a good story and I would definitely recommend it to people. I don't know if it's maybe this whole steampunk thing that I'm just not that big a fan of. I've never really read anything else that's steampunk. However, the, I mean, there were some interesting things about it. So for the next two prompts, as you saw, there was a prompt that was to read a book that is other, so like outside of your normal uh, genres that you read. And then the other prompt was to read a book that is set in the present. I am currently this far, this much through Chris. And as I said before, I wanted to try and fit this in if I could. This can fulfill the first prompt to read a book that is outside the genre that you usually read. I don't read a lot of sci-fi, so this can fulfill that prompt. <laughs> this one can fulfill the prompt to read a book that's set in the present because even though I'm like, I know that there's different timelines, I'm pretty sure in general this is, I mean, this is basically, this isn't, hor this isn't historical fiction. This is, there's probably different like times in this, there's probably different years in this, but I, I would say in general that this is set in the present. I think my priorities right now are probably going to be to try and finish Cress, because I really wanted to get that done, read more of uh, Girl, Woman, Other for a book that's set in the future, I've, not the future, in the present. I'm also halfway through What If It's Us, which could also set the, uh, fulfill the prompt for a book set in the present. So like, depending on how much I get of all my other books done, I could choose that one instead. So I'm going to see what happens. I also think I'm going to put on like, I'm going to put on an audio book so that I can listen to something because I need to like do something that isn't just sitting down and reading and I kind of need to tidy a bit so I think I'm going to do that now and then I'll get back to you later. It's just gone seven where I am which means that we've got just under six hours to go of the readathon. I have just finished Cress, which is my sixth book that I've finished. I am about halfway through an audiobook for, um, what's it called? Long Way Down, I want to say, by Justin Reynolds. I'll obviously change that or update it if it's wrong. So I've got about 45 minutes left of that, so I might listen to it at some point if I either just don't want to read physically or if I want to do something else at the same time. And then I'm also going to try and read as much as possible of Girl, Woman, Other. I think I can get it, get a big chunk of it done. Um, what was I going to say? And the audiobook can complete the prompt for something set in the present day. Because I'm pretty sure it's set in the present day. So <laughs> hopefully I'm going to get these books done. I'm not going to say too much because I'm super tired, but... It's like 11 o'clock. I think there's still two hours left of the readathon. But as I said, I'm just really tired. And I've got, I think, about 200 pages left of Girl, Woman, Other. So I don't think I would be able to finish it within the two hours anyway. And also, it's too good a book to be reading it while I'm like this tired because I probably won't remember it properly tomorrow which just would be a shame so I'm gonna save the rest of it for a time when I can actually remember what I'm reading however I do feel like I've read a lot I will do some sort of wrap up discussion at the end of this another day when I can think uh, while I wanted to stay up until the official end to be fair I was I, I like I was awake for the beginning of the readathon I was awake for every single um, roll drop and like I've literally only had like five or six hours sleep within the last 42 hours so I'm considering it a win. I obviously I didn't 
really complete all eight prompts but I mean I st I feel like like 250 pages that's the same size as like another book so we're gonna say that I completed them all I'm happy with it <laughs> and all of a sudden it's over and it's Monday today I had a great time doing this readathon I'm definitely when it happens in the future again I'm definitely going to be doing it participating in it it was just so much fun I'm going to do a quick little wrap up of all the books that I read during these last 48 hours however I do want to just say even though I know that they're not going to be watching this video I just for the sake of it want to throw out a huge thank you to Becca who was the person who organized this whole readathon it has been so much fun <laughs> i've really enjoyed it even though it might not have come across throughout the vlog because i was tired but it was also a lot of fun and i'm so happy that i vlogged it so that i've got it sort of to look back on just because i honestly don't remember much of it because i was tired and i think i've said that like a thousand times throughout this vlog but <laughs> that's fine i'm gonna leave becca's uh youtube channel link down in the description box she is becca in the books on youtube there's also a bunch of wonderful people who were doing the live streams so i will definitely link all of them down below i'm not going to name all of them because there were so many but it was just it was so much fun if you didn't participate in this readathon then you can still go and check out the live streams there's 48 hours worth of of reading sprints that was like so much fun uh so many different funny things that happened you should also check out the twitter account for um becca's bookopathon because becca has been like <laughs> retweeting certain funny things that people have been tweeting about and now i'm just gonna go into the wrap up because <laughs> this video is long enough as it is as you would have seen first book i read was the hunger games i gave this five stars the same i did the first time i read it not much to say about this, everyone knows what The Hunger Games is about, pretty much. It was a great book to start off with because it was easy and it, it was five stars. I really enjoyed it, so therefore it sort of set me up to enjoy the rest of the readathon. So I'm very happy I decided to start with this one. And then obviously I went on to The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, which was quite a bit shorter, but still very enjoyable, gave it four stars. I definitely recommend picking up The Chronicles of Narnia if you haven't already. A great little children's fantasy classic series. And then came the two books that I read as ebooks, and that was Read at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. I gave that three stars. I, as I said, enjoyed it. It's definitely a good book. I think maybe I should have read it at a time where I wasn't quite so tired. And then I read Cheer Up by Crystal Fraser, which was a contemporary graphic novel and the only graphic novel I read throughout this whole readathon I was sure I was going to read more but I didn't. <laughs> I gave that three stars again because it was a really cute story. I enjoyed it but I do feel like there was, I don't know, I, there was something missing for me but I still really enjoyed it. And then I went on to Mortal Engines by Philip Reeve, gave this three stars as well. <laughs> I mean I enjoyed it. Don't know if I'm going to continue with the series. I feel like I would have preferred it a lot if I had been a bit younger. I still enjoy quite a bit of YA, but this just... <sighs> I don't know. I just wasn't like, I'm not, I'm literally like, I'm fine to leave these characters now. I'm not actually that bothered. I do not regret reading any of these books. I think all of them are really good. Just... This was five stars. It was okay. It was meh. So we're going to leave it at that. Then I went on to finish Cress. I only had about 150 pages left, I believe. Managed to finish this. I was very happy about that. And gave this four stars, the same as I did the first time that I read it, because this was a reread. This is my favourite that I remember. I can't remember with Winter. I honestly cannot remember how much I like this. But there's just something about the, the plot and the characters. Cress as a character is just, I think, one of my favourites throughout this whole series and I think it's just the, the the tangled vibes that I get off of it that I really enjoy. Then I listened to the audiobook for Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Before I think I said Justin Reynolds because I wasn't quite sure if it was Jason or Justin. It was Jason. It's Jason Reynolds. The audiobook was also narrated 
by the author which was just amazing it was just such a great book i recommend it so much it's very relevant to i mean what's been happening in the world for ages but like specifically with black lives matter what's been happening in the last couple of years is super relevant i can't remember when it was written i think it was 2017 it's very reminiscent of the hate you give but i enjoyed it more than i enjoyed the hate you give there's just something about it there were so many lines that i sort of had to sit and process for a while because they were just so truthful and so beautifully written and i just really enjoyed it and i recommend it so much and then finally i started uh go woman other this is another one of the books that i definitely recommend obviously i'm not finished with it yet so i can't say this i'm really enjoying it so far i think it's going to be five stars because it's just so wonderful the way it is written is very experimental there's no like proper punctuation as such because there's no there's no full stops there's no capital letters at the beginning of words there are like commas and stuff like that but for the most part it's like it feels it's hard to explain <laughs> but it's written very experimentally as well as the fact that it's almost like short stories that have a connection i want to make a separate video about this which i haven't done that yet i have not made like a video about just one book um going to depth with it before but i feel like that's something that i really want to do with this especially because it's so easy to just split it up into the stories and i think each story brings with it something new to talk about and i think i've been sitting talking for long enough so i'm just gonna say thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoyed it I just had the best experience during this readathon. I really enjoyed it. And as I said, I'm definitely going to be joining in with more in the future. Obviously, as I said, going to leave the links to all of the channels that were involved in this readathon. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.